It's Fridays with Friends, where I have an interesting friend on. We talk about really whatever we feel like talking about, news, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, Joining us is Dave Wyman, former NFL player for the Seattle Seahawks, co-host of Wyman and Bob on Seattle Sports 710 AM, and the color analyst for the Seahawks Radio Network. Hello, Dave. Hi, Brandy. I'm honored to be one of your friends. Well, and I um, I wonder if Dory Monson knows that you're doing this. I know that you go on my uh, friend Dory Monson's show every week. Does he know you're here? Uh, well, actually, I'm taping with him right after we get off the, the air. So once oh. he found out that you were taping me, it was like, OK, he has to. It's like a, you know, a dog marking its territory, basically, I think. Yeah, it's a jealousy thing. I hope he doesn't actually urinate on you. That would be <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if he does, because uh, I want to have you back on to talk about that. Um, There's a reason I wanted you on this week. I mean, because I consider you a friend, but also, you know, there's this Brittany Griner thing going on in Russia. She's now pled guilty in Russia to what she says was inadvertently bringing these vape marijuana cartridges. You know, I think what strikes me about her is one of the many things, and I talked about my opinion on this situation earlier on in the show. I know you don't love to talk politics and give your opinion on politics, but... I mean, to me, I just thought it was interesting that you have an American athlete who would go to Russia, especially, you know, given the relationship between the two countries. Did you ever have to go over or play overseas or do anything like that when you were an athlete? Yeah, actually, uh, I played in, believe it or not, I've been to Tokyo three times. Um, And twice I was in the NFL, once with the Seahawks, once with the Broncos. But um, the funnest trip was uh, my senior year in college. We went and played in what was called the Coca-Cola Bowl. And basically we we just played uh, Arizona, who was in the Pac-10 at the time. So, um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, last year, or no, it was what, two, three years ago, uh, we went to London, you know, the Seahawks did. And then, and so, yeah, this grinder thing came up and I'm, I'm like, I'm going to Germany. I better uh, make sure that my bag is is clean and I don't have anything in there because it's just it's scary to think that, you know, everything is so different there. And, um, you know, and I didn't really experience that in any of my international trips. I forgot also when I was with the Broncos, we played in Spain, in Barcelona uh, in the preseason. So they were all exhibition games. But, um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's scary to think about that. But I mean, I feel like did she not know that? I mean, did she not know how strong the the rules are there? Was she just so used to, you know, the U.S. and the fact that, you know, you you can have those kinds of things. But it's scary to think that uh, in another part of the world where you could travel into that you could be sentenced to 10 years in prison or something like that. Yeah, and I know that like Spain and London and Tokyo, they're not Russia. But when you were traveling to different places as an American athlete, do you recall getting any sort of special, I I don't know, training or or direction on sort of how to act or rules or how to behave before you went over? Yeah, that's a good question. We really didn't. The only thing, you know, when I was at Stanford, um, and I think the reason why we beat Arizona is because uh, we had a, a sleep doctor come in and tell us how to, you know, get your body clock right because of the time change. And we were only there for, I think, three days before the game. And from what I understand, the Arizona guys didn't have that. And of course, Stanford did. They had some professor come in and say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what's happening to your body. But no, nothing about, you know, any of the the cultural things or any of the customs and things like that. Uh, it was, uh, and it was really bizarre, especially the trip to Tokyo, where first of all, I walked that field and it was about 89 yards long, not a hundred. Uh, and, and then also people didn't know when to cheer, you know, it was, uh, they cheered the band when they came on the field, but uh, yeah, it was very, uh, it was very bizarre, but no, there was no, you know, like, it's a good question you ask because, you know, you would think with, um, you know, people traveling internationally, especially if you're going into Russia, you know, that you would uh, be briefed on on all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And again, Brittany Griner says that this was inadvertent that, and this is not the crime of the century. I mean, obviously it's serious in Russia, but, you know, inadvertent to leave these in her bag. And I don't know, she might've got some directives on, hey, you're going into Russia, here's what you need to do. But I guess I just think of some of these athletes who on the off season, um, are are young. I mean, NBA players and NFL players, some of them are in their their um, 20s, their early 20s. And it's like, gosh, if you're going to travel abroad, you need some sort of direction to make sure you don't get in trouble. 
Yeah, and I hadn't even thought of that, you know, uh, as far as, uh, you know, playing in, in different countries, what their different rules are for things like that, because like you said, it's become so commonplace here, but it, you would have thought that uh, somebody would have briefed them, though. I mean, especially if you're going into a place like Russia, but, but still, I mean, the whole thing is just really ridiculous, and, you know, hopefully they're they're able to, you know, get her, get her back and I saw something the other day that possibly we would have to do some kind of a trade, you know, the the U.S. So, yeah, we'll see. But uh, never experienced anything like that. But I'll tell you what, it sure made me think because, like I said, we're going to Germany this year. Uh, the Seahawks are. So, uh, yeah, I got to think about all those different rules. Yeah, and at least that's a friendly nation. But I know there's some countries that just have crazy rules around, like, spitting your gum on the ground and just wild stuff like that. You know, I don't know if you care to weigh in on this, but I've seen some people on Twitter being like, well, if it was LeBron Dr James in uh, a Russian prison since February, we would have got him out already. Do you think there's any truth to that? Yeah, I mean, I get that. I, I understand that... Um... You know, like, here's what I don't understand. Like, um, I like watching women's basketball. And, you know, our friend Dory uh, coached it. And, you know, and, and I coached uh, girls uh, at in the shot put. And the difference between girls and boys is the girls listen. <laughs> the boys don't typically. But, yeah, but I, I just don't think you can. I saw during the tournament. I think it was Cadillac or one of the car companies that was talking about what a shame it is that only 10% of the viewers of, um, you know, of the NCAA tournament watch the women's tournament. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do about that? I don't, I don't really get what the point is. I mean, it's, it's, everybody is free to choose. And, and I do watch the women's tournament, but I don't understand that, you know, I know that everything is about, making these changes now and you know how we look at things and I, I get how the corporations are virtue signaling you know with uh, with all of that but it still doesn't make any sense to me I mean you can't force people to watch it so I guess the reason I'm bringing that up is because yeah maybe maybe LeBron James does you know I mean I think there would be a lot more outrage over you know LeBron James being hooked up in in prison somewhere rather than Brittany Griner. Well, and he's just a higher profile celebrity. I mean, to think that Russia, if LeBron James did anything while well, in Russia, to think Russia wouldn't scoop him up to try to use him as leverage, you know, one of the most famous people in America. I mean, absolutely they would, you know, without hesitation. Um, just segueing into sports in general, you know, back when I was a kid, so like 10 years ago, <laughs> 15, 20 years ago. It was 40 sports, for me. Sports to me was always sort of this thing where it was like there was no controversy, there was no politics, there was no like anger over it. And some of this is tied to the Brittany Griner situation, which has become kind of political because of her, you know, protests during the anthem and stuff, which I talked about earlier, which I think is just silly. But, you know, do you think that that sports is still something that Americans can unite around or are we kind of past that? Yeah, well, I, I think. I do know a lot of people that stopped watching the NFL and stopped watching the NBA because of that, because they don't want their sports with a side dish of politics. And they, you know, they really, it's kind of like, you know, like at the Oscars, you know, every actor gets up there and gets a chance to voice their particular opinion. You don't, you don't want that. You know, I, I, I think uh, Bill Maher said it best, uh, you know, he was talking about Facebook and social media and he said, we need to go back to the days when we had no idea how much we hated each other. You know, it, it just, it, it, everything is in your face and being, you know, forced on you. And so, yeah, I think that you're losing a lot of fans. I mean, I, I know the NBA's ratings have, have taken a hit and, but it, yeah, it's kind of, it, I don't think they care. The NFL doesn't care. That's for sure. The NFL is king, but you know, I, I do think they kind of walk a little bit of a fine line sometimes because you're right. And for me, it's just, you know, I don't care about people's politics. I just, I want to escape. I want to escape and watch this game. And it's my team versus your team. It's not the Democrats versus the Republicans, you know, and uh, you, you just want to kind of lose yourself in that little fantasy for three, three and a half hours. So uh, I, I really, I still just despise that part of it, that, uh, that they're forcing politics down people's throats that really just want to escape. 
And that's the word I was looking for, I think, is escape. That's sort of the element that feels like it's eroding a little bit. As a as a talk a sports talk radio host, do you how do you though avoid the politics of some of these things? Do you avoid it altogether or do you just have no choice but to to discuss it? Yeah, I'm well, <clears throat> it doesn't come up a whole lot and I think I think because look, my theory on it has always been if you know if you go too far one way or the other, you're going to lose half your audience, and especially here in Seattle, you know, you you have to be be kind of careful. So you know, I think the most controversial we got was when the head coach from Washington State lost his job because he wouldn't take the vaccine, and which you know I've said this on Dory's show, I'm all for the vaccines, but um, as far as the mandates, I think it's outrageous. I mean, you know, for most people it goes, and for me it goes this way, it's God, family, work. You know, that's number three on the list. And it's not just some annoyance like, no, you can't smoke on the job. Because that's what my co-host was saying. Well, every every job has rules. I'm like, this is a little bit different, man. This is, you're, you're having somebody uh, force you to do something medically that you may not want to do. And like I said, I'm all for the vaccines. I, I think it's a it's a good idea, but forcing people to do it at the, you know, to the point where you're going to lose your job uh, was just outrageous to me. So you know, to me, uh, for me, I I made that point. We didn't go on and on about it, but you know, we kind of run our show like like what we were talking about. This is where people go to get away from all that, right? And it's and it's everywhere. So, um, yeah, we talk about the Mariners and the Seahawks 85 percent of the time. You know, every once in a while we'll do a story like uh, Griner. Um, but, you know, for the most part, it's just talking Mariners and Seahawks. And I think people, yeah, they tune in just to, to get away from all of that stuff. Yeah, you try to get away from it, and then I suck you into a political podcast. Well, it's your show. It's your show. You can do whatever you want. (laughs) When you were um, active, when you were playing, do you remember any sort of political controversial situations that arose maybe in the NFL? Can you recall any? No. I mean, you know, I'm saying I think the first time I heard anything from anyone about politics, because, you know, it usually goes during it goes during the election, the football season does. And I remember when I was covering the team, and I think it was in 2000. Oh, gosh, was it maybe 2008, six or eight? Anyway, I heard somebody talking about, you know, a, a political candidate. But I mean, that stuff never came up. It really didn't. And. You know, everybody was just so nice about it. And it was back in the days where, and I, I, I do think that it's like, uh, you know, you don't bring up certain things. You don't bring up religion. You don't bring up politics. That's kind of an old fashioned thing, but it used to be like rude to do that. And now everybody uh, feels obligated. Like they have to let everyone know what they think. And, you know, and that's where people get so angry with each other. And, you know, that, that part of it to me is just, it's ridiculous. Like, no, I don't have to know what you think about this. And, and I have lots of friends that, um, you know, Danny O'Neill and I, I mean, I love Danny. He's like a little brother to me and we communicate all the time. We're on the show together for eight or 10 years. We're, we're pretty far apart as far as the politics go. We get along famously. It's not a problem. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, I just, I hate how it's become like fashionable to, you know, tell everyone what you think. And, you know, I, I guess it makes everybody, gives everyone a voice. And that, that's what Twitter and social media, which I'm not on any of that stuff, by the way. And it's done me really well. You know, I've been in the same time slot over there at at, uh, at 710 for 11 years now. So haven't moved and haven't said anything stupid yet. Well, I say lots of stupid things, but haven't said anything that's gotten me in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Not having social media can be a big help with that, uh, as you know. Uh, let's end with this. A little bit of a weird one, but first, how's your beautiful wife? She's awesome. Shannon and I have been, we're going on 30 years now. Thinking about uh, doing something special coming up uh, next next May, but she's uh, really into tennis. You know, and I'm like, you're like a cliche. Like, you're, you're in your 50s, and now all of a sudden you're playing you're playing tennis and yeah, but she's really into it and uh, she's picked it up in like the last six or seven years. So she's doing great. Well, as you know, you outkicked your coverage. And so let's end with, let's end with relationship advice from Dave Wyman. 
for all my single uh, viewers who are just looking for that perfect someone, what do you got for them? You know, it's funny. I had um, I officiated a wedding for my nephew um, a few weeks ago, and I got ordained online and all that. But my idea was to get marital advice from both families, both sides of the families. And there were some funny responses, like my wife said, you know, put the toilet seat down, and uh, my uh, my sister-in-law said uh, to the question, does this make me look fat? The answer is always no, you know, some funny things like that. But then there were some really good things like my dad. He said, um, treat your wife like God is watching because he is. And I really, I really love that. But mine was, um, you know, whether it's a week from now or two months from now or 20 years from now, if you're out on a date or whatever, just treat your wife like you just met treat it like it's your your first date and I always I kind of I always look at Shannon that way you know it's you know we've grown grown old together but uh yeah it's it's uh I, that just kind of keeps it alive but you know the other thing too is that if you love the other person more than you love yourself that's a good way to go because you know I know people go oh you you're in love with yourself well you should love yourself right I mean you, you absolutely you can't love anybody else unless you love yourself but if you love someone more and, you know, the more you give, the more you get is another one that uh, that has kept ours going. So, yeah, it's uh, oh, here's another one. This is re this is probably in the last three years. We are really good at fighting now. I mean, it does not last more than maybe five or ten minutes. <laughs> so we've got that part down and because you, you do fight over things. But, yeah, silly things typically. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've uh, learned how to do that very efficiently. Well, I love it. And there's a reason I asked you about that on a political podcast, because I think a lot of the challenges we're dealing with in our country, you know, and I, I mean, it goes to like crime and just mental health issues and all this. I think keeping families, strong families together um, and strong family units, I think, is really important to sort of our country getting back on track. And you've obviously managed to do that very well. So Dave Wyman, I appreciate you joining us on Fridays with Friends. Uh, since you don't have social media, where can people hear you and when? Yep, 7, 10 a.m. Yep, and then uh, during the, the season, you know, uh, also it's on 97.3 um, as far as uh, the broadcast for the Seahawks. So, yep, those two, uh, two to six, Wyman and Bob at 710 Sports. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, I think on both channels over at Bonneville uh, as far as uh, the Seahawks games go. All right, Dave Wyman, thanks so much. Thanks, Brandy. If you like this video, make sure to become an undivided subscriber to help us grow this mission to give Common Sense a comeback. You can do that in two ways, at patreon.com forward slash undivided or by becoming a contributor on my Locals community, brandycruz.locals.com. Thank you to the founding sponsor of Undivided, 1530 Mortgage. Visit them at 1530mortgage.com.